Hey, I'd like to tell you about a little bit of a problem that I've been facing in game development in general, and that is the problem where I need a script to reference another script. Now, in this tutorial, I'll also be referring to the word service, and you should know that service means script. So whenever I say service, I just mean script. So in this case, I'm going to be looking at a game, uh, at, at a scene that I'm making for a video game right now called Do Animals Dream. And in this case, I need the game object director's script called game director to reference another script called the dialogue canvas. And the way that I've done this is I've manually dragged the dialogue canvas into a serialized field here. Now that is pretty good for prototyping. It's a pretty efficient, but there are going to be limitations to that approach. Okay, it's not very strong. It is good in one case. And the one case is when I'm dragging game objects which are children or grandchildren of that object. So for example, this di dialogue canvas has a whole bunch of text objects and other buttons and other UI stuff that are children or grandchildren of that game object. In that case, and only in that case, it is a great idea for you to drag in those objects to be um, basically manually a set in this scene. And the reason why is because we can prefab the dialogue canvas. So if we delete the dialogue canvas, everything that's under it will come with it. If we copy it and paste it, everything that's under it will come with it. However, if the dialogue canvas, or so in this example here, if the director had a reference to, let's say, the sound machine, that would not be very good. Because if I pop the sound machine out for a new version, I dropped in a new version too, then the game director would have to be reconnected. I'd have to re-drag in the sound machine to the game director. Okay, and we don't want to do that. And the re main reason why is because the scene file in uh, any game development engine is going to be binary, or actually not everyone, but in Unity in particular, uh, scene files are going to be binary files. And binary file files are always going to be our bottleneck in version control, because only one person can edit a binary file at a time. So that would mean that uh, we can't have multiple people changing these dependencies at the same time, which is uh, terrible for workflow. So it's always better for us to resolve these kind of things over code when possible. Code is very powerful. And so we're going to show one way in which you would be able to do that now. And that is the singleton method, the singleton pattern. Okay, so in this case, let's say I have the director script and I want to reference another script called the service locator. I can do that anywhere in the code. I can reference the service locator by doing service locator dot instance. And the reason why is because the service locator is a singleton. So we're going to talk about that paradigm first. So if I jump into here, or actually, let's, let's go here. The service locator is actually a, pa a separate pattern, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But first, I want to explain why is it that I can reference service locator anywhere. Service locator is defined as a singleton of type service locator. And so because it's a singleton, that allows me to access it anywhere. If we look into the singleton code, which will be provided linked in the description below, the singleton is a abstract class that has a static reference to a mono behavior somewhere, which is an instance of that class. So what that means is the singleton doesn't necessarily exist in the scene but the service locator exists in the scene and so the singleton can find that service locator and then connect you where you need to be and so it's sort of like um i guess this paradigm would be sort of like an analogy of having a oh maybe like a big bell that you could ring in order to get the service locator to come to you so whenever the, uh, the uh, singleton needs to be referenced you could ring this big bell and the service locator will come and anywhere in the code you can reference it by calling service locator dot instance which is uh, basically if it hasn't been found already it will do a find object of type for that um, exact type that you need okay and the way that it's written right here I, I wrote this myself it is basically um, uh, pretty good for reloading a scene as well and so uh, it, it doesn't need additional work in order for that to happen. So that is a singleton and it allows us to reference the service locator at any time. Now singleton's pretty powerful, it's pretty cool. And so let's say if I wanted to reference the sound machine. So a sound machine in my game is basically one game object that's responsible for creating all the sound for the game. However, if I wanted to reference this sound machine from the director, right, and this is very common, uh, you might need to reference a, a sound class anywhere in a game, because many different classes are going to need to create sounds. 
Well, my sound machine would need to be a singleton too. But then so would my save data system, and so would my enemy AI manager. Every single thing I would want to manage would have to be a singleton in this case. So what about a little bit of a new pattern? So in order to replace the having a singleton everywhere, instead we can just make one singleton, and this singleton will get us a service that finds all other services. So I guess if the first analogy was like ringing a bell and then the singleton would come to our ready, this analogy is a little bit more like having a telephone operator where we would, I guess, ring the bell to get the telephone operator and then we would say to the telephone operator, hey, please connect me to the sound manager or the log manager or any other service we need. And so this service locator literally is a service dedicated to locating services. Okay, so that is the second paradigm I wanted to share with you. So uh, let's jump into that now. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm doing service locator dot instance, and then I have this get service method, which is very strong, very powerful, and it will allow us to obtain a sound manager if there's one inside the scene. Again, there is an expectation here that there's only going to be one, so that we make sure we're returning the correct one, which is of course the only one. And so the way that that works, I'll now jump into explaining the service locator scene, is it only has two methods. The first is in its awake, it calls singleton builder on its own instance. What that is going to allow is it allows the static instance variable to now point to this particular instance. And that is what's allowing it to respond to that bell when we ring it, if that makes sense. It is connecting the singleton section of our class with the actual um, instance. So that is the first thing that it will do. The next thing that it will do is it will create a list, or in this case, a dictionary, to be specific, of service references. And the reason why it does this is it's going to cache the reference to any particular service that it obtains. That way, if we ask it more than once for the sound machine, it's not going to be looking all, all over for it. It's going to have it written down in a phone book, and it will be able to quickly connect us to that line. And so here is the method itself called get service, which again, we're using generics here, which is the T, which means you could pop in any service request that you want there, and it will look through the scene for an object of that type. And if it can find it, it will return it to you. Otherwise, it will uh, create an error and complain and make a lot of noise in order for you to know there's a bug somewhere in your code. So that is the uh, paradigm in its entirety. You're going to call service locator instance, which will obtain a singleton of type service locator. And then that service locator can be used to get any other service you need. And so this is this happens all over my code where basically a you just have to get the service locator and then you can grab any other service you would like. So that is how it works in practice. It's very powerful in reducing the number of direct dependencies you need, in particular reducing the number of scene, uh, scene dependencies that you need particularly those that are not of a child or grandchild uh, relationship. But there are limitations to this approach. So when we made that singleton instance, we essentially made it so that anywhere in the code, we could say service locator dot instance. And that is a globalization of that uh, data. So we are creating a global variable, which is dangerous, right? You often don't want to have data that's global because then it can be accessed anywhere. And so that can be a little bit problematic, particularly for a large code base. The main concern that we have here is a race condition, which is where two different uh, methods may be called at the same time. They may be both trying to obtain a service, and then they both might edit the service. And that can be a big problem when we have a multi-threaded environment because it can result in a data collision where you try to read it when something's being written to, you can have a big problem there. However, that is not going to be a problem for us in Unity because thankfully Unity uh, is a little bit more constrictive, right? It's not a, a, a big boy engine. It, it's, it's a little bit more um, uh, hand-holdy in the sense that we actually only have a single thread in Unity. So we just don't have to worry about that, okay? It's a little bit easier for us to code in. It's a little bit uh, reduces the problem complexity to some degree. And so what, in, instead what happens here is we don't, we don't have to worry about it at all. We know that only one service will be referenced at any given time. Okay, um, however, if you are working in a multi-threaded environment, uh, obviously you just want to be using semaphores, mutexes, uh, these additional um, 
multi-processing architecture, multi, multi-threading uh, approaches in order to wrap around the different services that we might want to ob- obtain. So there are ways to do that as well. However, in Unity, we just don't have to worry about an additional layer of runtime uh, security. Now, the other concern is just in a general design sense. Hey, okay, so you're making a global variable, and yeah, it might not lead to a race condition, but still, it's a global variable. That's not really elegant design. And that's a good point. There are trade-offs here. In allowing us to grab this uh, variable anywhere, we are leading ourselves to some bad design decisions that could be made with respect to globally accessing data anywhere. This is, of course, an alternative to some other more robust approaches. So for example, right now, it's, it's sort of in fashion to practice dependency injection. So dependency injection, or DI, is where we would still have these local variable references. However, instead of connecting them in the scene, we would inject them at runtime. Okay, that's called DI. And there's a lot of great third-party libraries for that available. However, I have found that dependency injection can be a little bit uh, more difficult to work with. And I have found that the service locator, while it is not as performant, um, it can be m- much easier for us to work with, particularly in a prototype-like environment. So I have found it, it's a really great use for, for my particular case, but you should be considerate of all these positives and negatives when making the right decision for your code base, which again, might need something similar, might need something different. So please check out this code in the description of this video. Let me know if it's useful for you. If you have additional questions on popular programming patterns in Unity or otherwise, I'd be happy to help you out with that. Just leave me a question or a comment in the comments section below. Like this video if it helped you out and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Good luck.